Well, this time of year we don't do many top ten lists, but I did want to grade the horses. I think that was very important. And Amy was here. We're on our way to Michigan. We're having a great day. And um, I thought it'd be fun. Top ten list right now. Horses that, uh, I, and I had said this in an earlier video, I, I'm concerned. Because I put a lot of thought into my top ten list and I went through. I had 22 horses I started with. So we are having a great year because almost half our stable are horses that I would consider in the running to be in a top ten list. Almost half of our entire Group well, of I think it comes down to whether or not you're going to put someone, a, a, a two-year-old that want to mate in against a two-year-old that want to stay. Well, no, no, and that's a good point. My top, my top of my list was not not just based on talent, but based on how good they look and what they're eligible to. Okay. Right. So mine was based on what they've done and horses that I are on their way to using. That's good, but I'd be careful about using projections, right? I know when you look at a horse like Captain Incredible. It's hard to project. He didn't even make your list. I can tell by your yes, face. He did. That's why I but made it. He, so it's I'm not hard gonna to put. I'm sorry, but I can't put Blue Ventura on. No, no, him. absolutely not. In fact, Blue Ventura didn't. Make, I, I don't want to start naming names and dropping names. But he didn't make my top ten list. He raced great last night. He's a nice horse, and that's. But that's very important. My 22 didn't have Blue Ventura, on, right? When I look at the rest of the horses, there might be 30 or, or 35 that I would have. That bottom part of 30, 35 are still going to be very useful horses. I know one thing. I would have no problem owning a Blue Ventura. No. Very nice colt. Did his work great yesterday. And the fact that he's raced four or five times and is now getting better. You know, you see that little bit of a regression sometimes. The horses peak. That's what they can do. No more. And you can't do anything more for the most part. That's a little, that's a little sad to see that happen after five starts, but it does. It does happen, right? The, the, you look at a horse like Green Glitter. She just is what she is. And I was worried that that would happen, and it did. But it is what it is. But that doesn't mean she's not going to be a useful horse. She's just not going to be a sire steak horse. So you bring up a very important point. But even when I look at, when we're talking about useful horses, Green Glitter is nowhere near on my list now. So if you say, okay, we're going to start with 50 horses. Yeah, but what are you looking at? Are you cheating looking at the Olympics while we're trying to do our top 10 list? Well, yeah, I knew you were going to ramp with <sighs> When's the next big race? I don't want you rushing through the list to get done. How long do we have? What kind of post time are we looking at for? Four minutes. We can't do the four minutes. What are you talking about? Who's racing in four minutes? What is this that's going? The relay. Oh, my God. Let's just do the damn thing. So, uh, when you start with 50... And then you can still say there's 30 or 35 horses that are somewhere between useful and very good. It's a pretty good run, I think. I think. We've had some that we've sold, some that we've turned out because they were immature or injured or something like that. But still, uh, a very, very good, good group of horses. So, uh, my top ten, our top ten list, you did yours a little bit different. You, you talked about projections, whereas I just wanted to look at, here's our good horses. I'm going to list them and one, how good they are, and two... Uh, what they're eligible to, and that's important, because there's one horse in particular that is really only staked regionally with a couple other soft stake races, and then we have two other horses that are coming on strong that are staked to everything. So I put that soft stake horse in third when I left the horses that, that are tr racing very, very good, uh, but are eligible to a lot more. I put them at the top, and I, th I thought that was fair. If it was close, if it was a photo finish between those three, then I would pick um, you know, the other two that I talked about. So that's how I do it. So I'm going to start with number 10. No, I'm going to let you start with number 10. You're going to give me your number 10 horse on your top 10 list. August 4th, 2024. Go. Resolve indeed. Resolve indeed. Okay. Why? Uh, I thought she, I was really impressed with her qualifier. Mm -hmm. And I just think, uh, I've always liked her. I just, I think that she's heading in the right direction and I behind everybody else, but, um, Two minutes was very surprising to me, 28 seconds on the end of it, the way she finished up her mile. You know, I, to be very, very honest, I thought she'd go off on two, two in a piece. Two, three. Two minutes and the way she did it, yeah, I was thoroughly impressed with, impressed with every single qualifier that day, and this filly has really caught my eye. You know how I feel about her. I thought she's been a really nice filly from day one. 
not super well bred, doesn't have a deep pedigree, just goes out and gets it done. But I love how she trains with that chip on her shoulder. I love that. I love the little, you know, I want to kill you kind of attitude. And she's a sweet filly in the barn, but when she's on the track, it's go time. And I got a lot of respect for the horses that come to play with that kind of attitude. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Number 10 for you is Resolve Indeed. My number 10 is Rose Run Alexandra. I just think she's coming on. She looked great the other day. I was going to put her almost up in number five, but that's where you have her, obviously. So, um, but I just thought you have to go so fast in that two-year-old division. I think she's a super, I put her on and had a, had a gorgeous package. Those were my 10 well, and 11. She's, she's coming from a lot. She's been through. The gorgeous package was a winner the other day in 55. Get, it was really that. hard for me. I just said 54. But again, she, I think she is still advancing very, very quickly. And yeah. Yeah, we're there in like one minute. No, that's a lie. We're there in three hours. Two hours and 40 minutes, boo-boo. Well, if you ask me in 20 more minutes, do you know how long it'll be? Two hours and 20 minutes. And then if you ask me again in 20 minutes, it'll be two hours. So why don't you just have a nap? Okay, well, then you're going to keep asking me every 20 minutes. Um, I think Rose and Alexander could get way up the list. We have not seen her ceiling. We don't know what she truly can do yet. I just looked at her and said, you know what? She's a solid 6 through 10. I'm going to start her at 10 and let her advance. So my number 10, you do not look at my list. I saw you. You were cheating. You looked. How do you know where I'm looking? I, can, I saw you looking that way. Number 10, Rose and Alexander. Who's your number 9? Princess Dream. Princess Dream is it number 9. Same okay. reasons as the other Philly. I, I agree. Put, they were the exact same. I guess if we were to really deep dive into the horses, uh, her sister just won the hand belongs also. Also, yeah. So it's very important to, to, not, to note that. I didn't even remember that. Yeah, one. War We Michelle. I was thinking it. War We Michelle won the hand belongs yesterday. This is her muscle mass sister. And she is way behind and catching up quickly. My number nine is also Princess Dream. They're both the same number nine. I think my nine and 10 could easily wind up way further up the list if we were to do a theoretical list later in the season. Uh, Princess Dream, I just think, beautiful gate. I talked to Sylvain myself after the qualifiers. He was very, very happy with both of the horses. Thought that they did their work very well. And, and I like that because I don't think he has any real idea of the time missed with those horses. Yeah. Like for us, we know that Gaslight Hall, right, we had a month where he was just jogging slow and swimming a lot and stuff. We know that. But that's nothing that Sylvain would know. Princess Dream, we know that she was in her stall. And they might have said, hey, she, you know, she was hurt, she was injured, coming back. But that really doesn't play into what he sees overall. But it does for us. I think the sky's the limit for both of the Phillies that I just mentioned. And although I do love um, Resolve Indeed also, Princess Dream, for me, is also at number nine for the exact same reasons. Beautiful filly, beautiful gait. You know, the one thing she did get to do with the time off, I mean, he's got to cool down those muscle mass and he's got to cool down. Stifle's got to fill out. She got to put some weight on. Emily's done a great job with her. And I think, as I said, sky's the limit for her. Number eight. Uh, Rosetta. Rosetta is in at number eight. Okay. Tell me what. I've always loved her. Um, I, I don't think she's really shown us what she can do yet. Uh, she's the she fastest had last quarter in the really, entire group. Well, she was a really good qualifier, but then she had a good tie up and she just kind of had some a she's leg in stuff. her schedule. Yep. And she's down, now she's down in Kentucky. She's at one start. I yep. just I think that she's going to just keep improving because I just do. Yeah. Um, I think she's a nice filly, and, and quite frankly, I sat behind her in her last three outings and I scratched her when she was scratched because she was out of sorts that day. We brought her back. Tim schooled her. The other day, she was much better, more, much more intelligent and, and cerebral, a better approach to racing. Before, she was just really hot, and you had to keep her contained, keep her contained, keep her contained, and then she'd bolt. The other day, much smarter. I, I You know, when usually when you move her to the outside, she wants to bolt, but I was able to wait on Yannick, which actually cost me the race. But I was able to wait on Yannick, wait on Yannick, wait on Yannick, and then attack, and which she couldn't do before. So she's understanding her work better, and she's getting smarter. So yes, I love her. My number eight is Resolve Indeed. Uh, I, I, as I told you guys, the bottom part of this list is made up of really, really nice horses that are coming on strong. Rose Run Indeed 
the qualifier was ultra impressive. It was only two minutes. But I don't think speed is going to be an inhibitor of her. I don't see her trotting in 56 saying nothing. That's just what she can go. I think she'll be able to go whatever she needs to. And I don't think that, you know, having said that, you're not going to put her on horses that are going to trot in 53. But I believe... Well, too, you have a mixed bag of who's qualifying right now. When you qualify in June, everyone's... It's the yeah. first time. They had to go qualify against horses that maybe have already raced. And the one thing that's important, too, is she's going to have three or four starts of overnights before she sees her next state competition, which is important. I wish we had two or three extra starts for Princess Dream because, obviously, she's not going to be near mature enough to race in a peaceful way. But when you look at her gait, like I said, the sky's the limit. I wish we had a little more time, but we got her here as quick as we could. And the fact that she made it here is, is pretty impressive at, at all. So, um, Resolve Indeed, I like a lot your, uh, your number seven. I think Captain. Captain Incredible at number seven. Okay. Uh, so. I have projection, obviously, but. Well, he did qualify in 56 to yeah. 26 the other day. Right. So, nice horse. Yeah. He's well on his way to proving that. Yeah. I can tell you that Harry hasn't changed his feelings about him. I think James is, is a little more silent on him. But Harry thinks he's a very, very good horse. And as I said to James, you're going to see a transition. I know Harry wanted to race him so bad. He just he just came up a couple of days short. His first start's going to be in the C division in Kentucky. And I know a lot of people would be like, what? C? Just hold on. This horse has got the Governor's Cup, the Matron, the Reader's Crown, the Bluegrass, the International Stallion. Yeah. yeah. So there's five major stake races coming up. Let's use the Kentucky Sires to help him along the way. Start the C. If he looks really good, we can move him up to the B. And if he gets the A, no problem. That's you fantastic. Can't down, so. Well, you can. Ron Burke brought it up to me the other day. He heard me explaining this to somebody, and he said, "No, no, no, no. They've changed that. Oh, they did. You can move down. Oh. You can move down. But uh, I don't know. I don't know the exact way. It isn't as precise as it was last year. It's open to interpretation a little bit more, I believe. So, Captain Incredible." If he's not on your list, you're just not paying attention. Here's a horse that we've been talking about praising all year long. Scott McEnany praised him. Ron Burke praised him. Harry Polt praised him. These are three very intelligent people. And um, I'm certainly not going to say they're wrong. I think the horse is a very good horse. You have him at number seven. My number seven is Rosetta for the same reason you said. And you said she's coming on. Here's a filly that tried at 27 and four. And if you watch the race, two things happen. One, she's made breaks in the straightaways before for no reason. So I was very aware of that. Don't break rule number one. Uh, number two, when she clears to the front, she kind of goes to sleep a little bit, right? Just a little bit for a second. And that's how Yannick actually, that's what allowed him to start to come back and beat me. That's when she used to run. <laughs> that's exactly why I had to watch her. She would make breaks there. So it wasn't like I could just hit her a swat and keep her going or pick at her. You know, I kicked the earplugs with the bit in her mouth and I tried to keep her going forward, but still a little bit immature just mentally she's just, just learning horse racing and that's the only reason she could beat through through all of that she still charted 27 and 4 in the end of it the fastest last quarter of any of the two-year-old fillies i believe maybe any of the two-year-old trotters for the entire day so that is very very important to know so rosetta very fast horse very nice filly we're gonna have a lot of fun with rosetta in kentucky who's your number six um my number six is alexandra alexandra okay about Alexandra, I yes. Just, um, you tell me about her. Well, she, I mean, uh, it's no secret that she hurt her knee and she was behind and we had to adjust her schedule. I think we should explain uh, the hurt her knee just so people get a clear understanding. So, if you're a horseman out there, I'm sure you've heard this story before. This horse never wore a boot training down, never wore a boot of any kind. Very, very simply organized as far as equipment goes. Hobbles, harness, Murphy blind on the left, line pole on the left. That's all she ever wore, I believe. And then one day, she touched her knee in training. It might have been the week before the open house. Yes. Put a little swelling on her knee. And, geez, that's weird. She's never done that before. She's never touched her knee before. So we changed her shoes a little bit, worked on her a little bit, put knee boots on her. And the next time that we went with her, she went right at her knee. Hit it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twenty times. And her knee blew up. And if you're a horseman out there and you've had horses long enough, you've probably seen this happen. It's very difficult. Once that knee blows up, it's very difficult, one, to get it down, and two, to keep her right. 
So I've been, I've seen this movie play out many times before. What was the name of that filly? We had a Bay Karen. She was exact lady. Yeah. Lady. Um, uh, I almost said Gaga. Lady. Uh, lady Paquette. Yeah. Nice filly I had. I owned her. Trained her down. Same thing. Never wore a boot. Never wore a boot. Started to touch her knee around June. We put a knee boot on her and pounded her knee all year long. All year long. And, you know, you're constantly draining it, injecting it, cooling it out, icing it. But you just can't get it right. Now, I've had this happen two, three, four times. And driven multiple horses where the exact same thing has happened. So, yeah, I know it's this guy's trying to be clever. Take your Winnebago and hit the road, butthead. Doofus. So, um... I love when people do that, eh? The, the big Winnebago's and trucks will do that all the time. So the lane is narrowing, but it's narrowing two city blocks up ahead. I'm sorry, I don't want to get in two city blocks back. I don't want to be the guy that gets in right at the last second. Look, I'm going to get in right now. Right now. This is, I am 500 meters. Oh, it's just dumb because these two lanes will be empty and then they'll be a yeah. super long. But anyway, you get the doofus back there. He's going to go, he doesn't like anybody getting at him, so he just wants to take up the whole I road. had someone give me the finger the other day. For that. Nah, but you're better. Well, just people get angry for whatever reason. Here, I'm the same way. Go Everybody get in front. I don't care. We're all going down the road. Anyway, um, so we did the opposite because I've seen this happen time and time again. I simply stopped with her. Stop. Cool it out. Don't even jog her until you get lots of heat out of that knee. We iced it, poulticed it, put her on the hose. And we started jogging her. She was fine, but her knee was still big. We had uh, the vet come in and shock wave it. It's starting to come down a little bit. And then we started galloping. Well, you're not going to see a horse hit their knee galloping. No pace. Just runner and runner and runner and runner. Every, every three, four days, we would gallop her up pretty good. Get some stamina into her. Uh, I had Nick Clegg come over and shoe her. Uh, he changed her angles and he actually put aluminum on her up front. And we put a go straight on that on that leg. So I don't want to... It is what it is. The knee has now come down good. It's probably 90%. There's still a little swelling where she hit it. A little goose egg there, but it's not that hot. It looks... Where's this guy going? It looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks pretty good. Um, and that's when we trained her in 2.5 and raced her. She raced great. She raced great the next week. A wealth of talent. I think we got her now. She was great. Her last start for, for Brett, he said she just picked her knee a little bit. And Jason was right. We decided we are going to continue to gallop her and keep her off of the pace, keep her out of that knee, and uh, race her the rest of the season. I think she's a tremendous filly. So that is what happened with her knee. Oh, we're just going to sing some troll songs? Okay. Anyway, I just thought explaining exactly what took place with her knee. There was no joint issue. There was no bone issue. She hit her knee. It's under control now, and we're working to keep it under control for the rest of the season. So that's that. That is your number six. No, number six. My number six is Freedom Hill. I don't think Freedom Hill could race any better than she did the other day. I think she's a, a tremendous filly. In fact, I'm going to pull my pants down a little bit here. I had Aunt Lily at five and her at six. And truthfully speaking, the only reason it's like that is because Aunt Lily's already done a lot. She's already won the next generation. And I had a lot of people say, well, see, Freedom Hill could have won the next generation. No, she couldn't have. Freedom Hill is better now than she was three starts ago. She's not the same filly. On next generation day, Aunt Lily was the right horse to have in there. But now, now, if we were to run the next generation now, I think Freedom Hill would be the horse we would race in that class. So I just wanted everybody to know that, just clarify that. I think both those fillies are Sire State fillies. They are tremendous fillies. We are lucky to have both of them. Very, very fortunate to have them. And we're going to have a lot of fun the rest of the season with them. But Aunt Lily's already done it. Freedom Hill is on her way to doing it. Hence, number six and number five. So I'm going to let you give your six and five your number six. Mine's number you have Aunt I Lily at Aunt six Lily. and Freedom Hill? Well, no, Aunt Lily's at five. Well, who's and your six? Freedom. Oh, your Alexander. six was Alexander. We talked about her. My Freedom Hill was six, so I jumped out of you. But yeah. My five is Aunt Lily, and your five is Freedom Hill. My five is Aunt Lily, and my four is Freedom Hill. Oh, you're jumping ahead. Well, 
Well, we're going to talk about the maintaining. Okay, maybe. so we did. We'll, we're going to talk about your five and four, and then we'll go to my four. That's fine. Okay. So you have Aunt Lily and Freedom Hill for the exact same reasons. And these are two extremely talented fillies. And, and like I said, our colt division was a little soft this year, which is disappointing because I had so much high hopes for them training down. But they all had ceilings and that was upsetting they all got there and they couldn't get there the one horse that seemed like he could hang maybe at the start at least in the next generation was Cato who I liked but again a little immature his knees are bothering him he may actually need some time off and if that's the case that's the case I'm not too worried about it he's going to come back and just because both the Marseilles and the Vegas they did and I was thinking about that now you say that I, I wrote that down I, I take notes throughout the year when we're, especially when we're going to sales the breeds things that are common, common denominators that come with horses, and the knees on the Marseilles were, were the same. Um, nevertheless, well, I don't know about that. That's a pretty select group, but you might be right there also. So, um, I assume this green arrow lane is is occupancy, but they never explained why. It did back there if you saw the sign. It did. Left lane over the track. You have a left lane open to traffic doesn't really tell you why there's a yellow line for this lane only. In no. Ontario, this is a high occupancy lane, the HOV lane, right? Yeah. So I assume... I'm assuming it'd be red or have an X if you weren't allowed to use it. Why? I don't Yeah, but why is look. left shoulder open? Oh, they just opened the shoulder. Oh, I see. Why would... This is kind of weird. Okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, five and four, I think you're 100% correct. Now, my number four is Captain Incredible. I don't think you can qualify him in 56 come 26 and 3 with the expectations we have for this horse, knowing what we know about him and having everybody talk highly of him. The only person who has been over the moon and ecstatic was James, and I think that's only because James is subdued about him. Harry just did some work on him. We're going to draw blood. He's going to go to Kentucky. He's going to race in Kentucky in the next round on the 13th, the next round of the Sire Stakes. I think it's important to get him down there and get a training trip into him also. And I am super excited to see Captain Incredible Race. He's my number four because when I look at everything he's paid into, I just finished telling somebody else this. We have, or maybe it was this video, I don't know. Uh, we have the Major, Breeders' Crown, Governor's Cup, oh, Bluegrass, International Stallion. Those are five. Oh, yeah, you said that one. I picked it. Yeah, it that's right. Number, There's five major stake races. To get him there is, is that's the trick right now is to get him there comfortably. If he can, great. It'd be upsetting, obviously, if he comes up a little short as far as talent, but I don't think everybody can be that wrong about a horse. Oh, he just is that nice. I think his ankles are going to appreciate the right one. 100%. And when you look at that horse, like I said to James, he said, James, you come 26 and 3, but you didn't even really start him up until halfway down the lane. So keep that in mind also. Um, so he's my number four. Now we're going to the top three list. I suspect our top threes are the same. I don't know. It'd be cool if they weren't. But one well, of Well, considering sure. you... Stop took, looking at my list. I'm not. You, you're but you... That way. <laughs> you were saying that I did, a, not, did not put a solid like effort it seemed like into you, my list. It seemed like you rushed. It seemed like you were rushing. Okay. Maybe you weren't. So give me your number three. Hit me with it. Chicago Hall. Chicago Hall is number three. Okay. Tell me is why. Is it your three? I'm not telling you. Oh. You're going to have to wait and see. Chicago Hall, number three. Tell me why. What you like about him? Why? Why he's not two or one? He's not two or one because. Um, well, well, because wait. it won. My other two horses ahead of him have won. They've trotted a fair. lot faster than he has, and they've been. No, I'm not saying the competition is harder or not harder. Mm -hmm. It's very hard in Ontario, mm -hmm. and he's holding his own. Mm -hmm. And you're not allowed to be in his lane anymore. Merge. I see that. I don't um, like how they do that. Either, but okay. And uh, luckily, when a bag of guy wasn't behind us, I get in no problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think that all three of my top. I think your top think three is the same. Th I can't imagine there's a horse that I'm missing that you yeah. aren't. So but my top three, I feel like it's hard because they're all in different jurisdiction. And I think if you inserted each of those horses into the other jurisdiction, they'd probably be fine. Yeah. So I, I think we're 100% the same three, top three, which I'm surprised. I thought it would not turn out this way. Maybe you were a rubbernecker and stole them off. I, well, I don't know, whatever. 
my number three is Arrowhead Hanover, and I think you have them higher. We're going to talk a wow. lot about Arrowhead Hanover. Just so you know, uh, I, we own a piece of Arrowhead Hanover, and that, that isn't common for all we the horses. We also own a piece of Chicago. And, but not a Maury. That was my fault. Well, what do you got? I can't keep them all, honey. We're going to go broke. We're going to have to sell the kids. Which one? Pick a kid. Pick one. We're going to sell. So I don't. I don't want to say this because I don't like burning horses down. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. But Wander Hill. Really? I like Wander Hill. Yeah. And that was my pick, and I've told everybody that my pick for Ohio. I picked not only Wander Hill but LT Troubadour. They were two of my top Ohio picks, and we've since sold both of them. Sold them both. I get it. That's my fault. But that also is very telling. You know, we all we talk about how it, it isn't the the richest people that buy good horses and people say ah oh, you do a great job picking horses out we do the best we can but even I don't know and if I did the two trotters that I picked wouldn't be sold right now one of them delivering milk for Enos out in the middle of nowhere okay so I don't know always either and uh, Arrowhead Hanover so in January you guys didn't like Arrowhead right no one wanted Arrowhead don't like them okay? you know international why money why are you saying that Who because you that? Oh, no one shares. bought the shares oh, well. No one wanted the shares. You guys didn't want him. Do you know when I bought the shares of Arrowhead Hanover? Merch. Do you know why? Because you sold my horse. Maybe. That that could be. Exactly. But that might be. A, that probably played a role in it. But mm. you're welcome, by the way. Thanks, One, we got top dollar for your horse. And two, we got a nice colt. You're welcome. This is where you say thanks, Anthony. No, I'm not thanking okay. So Arrowhead Hanover, you guys didn't want the shares of Arrowhead Hanover, and that's important. I want everybody to understand that you never know. We had one of the best trotters possibly we've ever had lurking in the shadows, and no one wanted him. Kind of the same as Ostro was two years before, and he's actually a way better horse than Ostro, and I love Ostro. Ostro Hanover to this day is probably one of my top five horses to ever drive. But that was another one that we just ended up with because no one wanted it. That's, that's what I mean. That's what I was getting at. So Arrowhead Hanover is my number three. Chicago's yours. Now Arrowhead Hanover trained down good. But even, you know, and here's another telling thing. A little bit more compact. And I drilled him hard in May. I'm watching him straight through the end of the year to see how he finishes up his year. Well, I because was, I was worried about his knees. I was worried about his knees a while ago. And his, I but they've never bothered just, him. And I just didn't think they were going to hold up. To be the honest. vet went over him with a fine tooth comb and I asked him to start with his knees. And he said his knees aren't even bothering him. So Arrowhead Hanover worked hard in May. You guys know that if you go back and watch my videos. He was a little was men mentally immature, doing things rude and ignorant, and I drilled him hard, way harder than any other horse in our barn in May. And the horses just come out swinging. You know, we raced him the other night, tried a 53 and 4 on scopes. I'm using our normal mathematical terms. Scopes 3 out of 5 for mucus after the race. Now that is not to say that those other colts didn't have mucus also. I'm sure they did. But ours was 3 out of 5. It had to have impacted his airway and his overall ability to race. And for him to trot 53 and 4 like that is utterly impressive. How's the swimming going? Is it okay? We were 5th in the relay. I, were I was terrible. I was actually, was second. I, I, it was bugging me the whole time I was doing my video was how we finished the relay. I was actually surprised you didn't ask. <coughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so Arrowhead Hanover's my number three only because uh, he's not staked. Right? That's not I told, his fault. No, he didn't stake it's him. not. But realistically, when we're getting to the bottom of it, you have to be able to race in bigger races to have some sort of notoriety. And if I'm going to put a horse, he is faster than Maury. He is faster than Chicago right now. He is. There's no denying that. But he's only staked in a Pennsylvania, the Standard Bread in Delaware, and the Keystone Classic, which is more than enough. It's more than enough. But he's not staked to the British Crown. Right? He's not staked to the Matron. He's not staked to any of the major, major dances. And you know what? He's always so tough because every year you have a horse that you think you could have staked to different stakes. And then every year you have a lot that you wish you didn't stake to major stakes. I'm going to throw that phone out the window if you keep looking at that relay. Do you not already know the finish? Oh, there's another one on. Oh, great. How are we doing I'm in this one? I'm listening to you. You're how, talking. How are we doing in this one? We're in third. We're in third right now? How long until it's over? Do I got to go another lap? Or? You need to take a turn going there. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Why is, it telling, why is the car telling you to be on the wrong side of the road? <laughs> yeah, that's silly, eh? 
It is, isn't it? It's telling me to be on the wrong side of the road. It's That's telling you silly. that you were supposed to go that way. Oh, you think I missed a turn? Is that what you're no. saying? No, I think... I think you're in England or something. Ollie, don't be silly. No, it, it might be telling me to go back. You think you're right? Because you it did say 358, now it says 4. Dad, just unzoom. It still says you're going the right way. No, I think it's just getting mixed up with the lane we're in. That's all. Because yeah. we're on the yeah. other side. Yeah. No, we're going the right way. It's fine. Anyway, um, so Arrowhead Hanover, I'm just trying to be fair, right? I think he is our fastest to you. <laughs> no, honey. We're not almost there. Um, when it comes to when it comes to what he's able to do and what kind of stature he's able to be recognized in because of those stakes, I put him at number three. But I think, yeah. I think he's a very, very, very. He's the fastest two-year-old we have right now. Well, there's I no, thought, there's no denying that. He I, just trotted in fifty. Put it this way, there were five horses that went faster than any two-year-old trotter has ever gone in Meadows history. How long do we have? Okay. Thanks for the update. I appreciate yeah. it. So there's that. Uh, Arrowhead Hound was just a good horse. So your number two is. Momentum, right? Momentum. You put Arrowhead at one. Because he's faster at well, this moment. Well, we might as well just talk about it. At this moment, and yeah, okay. I literally said, what, You know, four, she was I, so mad when I bought Arrowhead Four Hanover. minutes ago. When I bought those shares, you were so mad at me, and now he turns out to be one of our, our, your number one horse in, in August, which is shocking. Only because. Only because what? I just said, if you inserted those horses in the. They're yes, not in the same place. I know. If so, you took Arrowhead to Lexington, Now that you know her top two and one, right? So your number three is Chicago. Number two is Maury. Number one is Arrowhead. My number three is Arrowhead. My number two is Maury. And my number so one is Chicago. So we literally had the same list. Yes, we did. Without no, even... similar list. But I'm, I'm impressed. What horse was different on our list? Um, well, maybe you're right. Oh, I didn't have... Yeah. No, literally the same. No, it is. I think it is the same. That's impressive. Got the same ten horses. That's impressive because this wasn't easy. I have a lot of X's on here. Uh, country dancing, I think, by the end of the year could creep onto a top ten list. Pace fifty two and pace fifty two and four the other day. I know. A Trant is going to creep onto the list, I'm sure. Gaslight Hall twenty seven and four the other day. He's going to creep on. He could creep on the list. Gorgeous Package has already won a stake race and went in fifty five flat. Jimbery. That was my fault the other day. I think she's going to assert herself again as one of the better fillies. It's just going to take a couple of starts. Manhattan Money was third beat ahead in the Stallion Series the other day. Melisandre has not raced yet. We didn't get a chance. I can't believe you didn't put her on your list. You're mean. I'm going to tell her. I think Melisandre is a, a very nice filly. And I think she's going to end up being a nice filly. We just have to manage her appropriately moving forward. Oh, he'll know. Could have easily been in the top ten list. Although she only won a maiden the other night. She's raced well. And I think she's a nice filly. Rose Run AJ just paced 52 and piece the other day, come 27. Couldn't put him on there. And West the Warrior tried at 27 seconds the other day. I was never putting him on. Uh, I think you're going to eat those words I by the end of the season. Him He's on. fixed now, and Scott actually changed his tune about that horse the other day quite a bit. So those are horses that didn't make the list. Top three list, 100%. Arrowhead Hanover, fastest Colt. Don't blame me for putting him in one. I couldn't using my criteria because he can only go so far, right? He can only go so far because he's not staked. He staked in Pennsylvania. Great. He staked in the, you know, he won the Arden. He staked in the Keystone Classic. He staked in the Standard Bread. That is going to be a lot of fun. Jug Week. We have to figure out what we're doing with the kids. Just put them in the kennel for Jug Week, or what are we going to do? We only live an hour and a half from the Jug Week. They have school. I know. Yeah, I know. We're going to have to figure that out. If anyone knows of a reliable nanny. A reliable with nanny. With a driver's license. A reliable nanny with a driver's license for Jug Week. Lexington and Harrisburg, that would be great. Well, I don't have Iron. to go to Harrisburg. Why? You don't like Harrisburg? Well, I don't have to go to Harrisburg. Quietly has pretty good restaurants there. Right, because that's right up. That's the reason. So you guys, maybe you're married to somebody like this. I am all about the food. I spent the first... Fourth! Uh -huh. Do you know how many times Canada has finished fourth in these swimming Olympics? Ooh. Wow, you're in the country. How many times? Well, you just have to work hard. Like five times we finished fourth in finals. I remember. Summer didn't finish fourth. First loser. It's true. Well, we only have 30 million people so in the country. So did the good 
They have ten times the DVD. But I'm also like, she's going to love things. Oh, she is? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I've already started planning. Have you? You realize that she doesn't care that much. <laughs> Like, I they'll be like, go. where is Adeline? She is supposed to be on the high bar. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, she she went to eat and she she just decided she's not going to do it today. <laughs> nah, I'm going to be in the next competition. I don't care that much about this one. Yeah. Um. So our top three list is very very similar. Um, I put Chicago there only because more and this was tough for me. We both had Maury at second. And I think Maury's a very nice colt. I told everybody quietly, the horse that beat him the other day, they think very, very, very highly of. And I believe if Scotty just shoves him out. I didn't want to bring it up. I told you Scotty said. He goes, did you see the race the other night? And I'm like, what race? And he goes, you know exactly what race. He goes, I drove that horse so bad. I said, well, I wasn't going to bring it up. But now that you did. Maury? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I, I didn't even admit this to anybody. You didn't watch it, yeah. I, I did watch it. And when I was watching the lane, I was like... Move him, Scott. And I don't think I've ever, ever in my life even thought or said about Scott. I should never, ever tell him how to drive at all at any point. That's right. Ever. Yes, and I literally true. said it out loud. Yeah. And I was like. He knew that too, but I think he was coming in being a little conservative. The track was really bad. And I told him, but you don't know until you say this. I told him that Memento Mori was going to be a totally different horse when he got to Lexington. You guys don't understand this. The surface at Lexington, is, it's its like a different planet, and the horses react to it so much differently. Scott said he was so quiet. At Oak Grove, he was hot. He wore a snake horn. He was hot. Yeah. And, and he said, he was two fingers in Kentucky. I said, I told you he would be it's like that. Size. I wish we had been able to race him without hobbles. I really do. No. Because he'll have a week off next week, but I don't know if I want to qualify him without hobbles. I don't, I don't really know if I want to do that. So... Um, when it comes to uh, Maury, I, I was torn also. Here's the thing. Chicago Hall's a big, strong colt. We got to the bottom of his one ailment. He tried it in 56, and the night he did, he bled. Still come 28 seconds. We put him on Lasex, and then James drove him like the Tooth Fairy. Run, run him up the inside and get pinned down and locked in with him. And even he knows now he's a good horse. I think you're going to see a very good performance from Chicago Hall on Monday. And when you do, he's going to solidify himself as one of the better colts in Ontario. The difference is, he's also staked to everything. Everything. All those major stake races more he's made into, so is Chicago Hall. So, that's why I picked Chicago Hall. Just because he was bigger, stronger, he can trot as fast as Maury, I'm sure, right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll, maybe Maury will blow the doors off him like I think he will in two or three weeks and assert himself as the best colt that we have. But for right now, for me, right now, Chicago Hall, Maury, Arrowhead Hammer. And I think Arrowhead Hammer is the fastest one we have. I just didn't put him in first because it can't just be about speed. It has to be about what you can accomplish. And he doesn't have enough dances on his dance card to get it done. So easily could have been Maury, Chicago, Arrowhead, but I think I'm surprised we get all ten horses the same. I'm surprised. Since I put no effort in my life. Ha ha! I knew it! I was being sarcastic. That's what you accused me of doing at the start No, it's of the because stadium. it took me 15 minutes and you were done in two minutes while you're watching Clearly swimming. I, so I'm very good at multitasking. That has never been said before. So with that, I'm, we're going to let you go. That's your top 10 list. And we are going to do the rest of the videos right now. We have two I hours. I have of, to work on the billing. No. Well, I, I, don't really I have to do, do well, the other videos I'm going to do. You're going to grade them with me real quick. But... I'm going to do the other videos for you. That's fine. You can give out whatever grades you want or all of you. So we'll be back in just a minute. We're going to grade all the babies.